So yesterday we learned three Mishnayot where Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Eliezer believe a woman about the, well, the, the circumstances of her virginity or the father or possibly her relationships. And Rabbi Hoshua disagrees. There are, we learned three of these Mishnayot. And the final one described a situation where she was seen with someone in the marketplace. Rauhu mudaberet imechad. They were, she was talking to someone. There's clearly a sexual connotation here. And some texts, the printed texts, actually say in the marketplace. The next Mishnah. So now we're in the ninth Mishnah of the first chapter. Actually sharpens this case and begins. It's a carbon copy Mishnah, but with a slightly different scenario. So she was pregnant. So now when she's seen speaking to someone in the market, she could perhaps have said, look, I, I didn't have a relationship. But in this situation, she's pregnant. So she's not able to make that statement. And yet she replies in exactly the same way. I tamu buried, she was pregnant. And they ask, Mativo shela ubar haze. What sort of a fetus is this? And she replies, Me ish ploni vechohenhu. And she replies, He's from so and so, ish ploni, and he's a kohen. In other words, not just the child is a Kohen, but she is permitted to marry into the priesthood and the, the, the status of the child is okay. And Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eliezer, Omrim, Menet, Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer say she's believed. And Rabbi Yoshua repeats exactly the same statement that he made in the previous three Mishnayot. Rabbi Yoshua Omer, lo mi piha anu chayim. We don't live by her mouth. We don't take the evidence of the mother. Eila harezo b'chezkat mu'beret mi natinu mamzer. She's presumed to become pregnant from a natin or a mamzer. In other words, someone who's not Jewish or who's himself the product of a forbidden relationship. Ad shetavi ra'aya litvareha, until she brings proof for her statement. So Rabbi Yoshua makes exactly the same claim. And interestingly, Rabbi Yoshua is not only casting doubt on the ability of the mother to marry into the priesthood, but of course, if the child is the offspring of a mamzer, the child himself can't marry anyone else except for a mamzer. So Rabbi Yoshua's st statement really raises really difficult questions, but just like the previous three Mishnayot, so this is the fourth now in a row, the halakha goes according to Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Eliezer. We believe the woman. But, and there's now a twist. So the, the, this chapter of the Mishnah will close with the 10th Mishnah, with a maaseh, with a story, and the Gemara takes this story to reduce, let's say, to narrow the scope of the halacha, which Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Eliezer are articulating. So let's hear the story. Amar Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi said, Ma'aseh b'tinoket she'yarda l'malot mina ayn v'nenasa. So it once happened that a tinoket, this is a young girl, and I think it's presumed to be someone who can't. It's a young girl. Well, we'll talk about her ability to give evidence. A young girl. So she went down to draw water from a spring and she was raped. And the Mishnah doesn't record actually what she says. So I, I think the presumption is either she doesn't know who raped her because she may well not know, right? She's attacked by somebody. She can't know who, who, who attacked her. Or maybe the presumption is that she can't give evidence. It's not quite clear. But at any rate, we don't have any, we don't have any, she, she has no voice in this discussion. 
Amar Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says, Im rofa ir masin lichuna, hare zotinase lichuna. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri said, if most of the inhabitants of the town marry into the priesthood, in other words, that means that most of the inhabitants of the town's wives or daughters can marry into the priesthood. This one can marry into the priesthood, i.e. that if she's been raped by some kind of random guy, random guy from the town we assume that he's not a we let's say we go with we just go with the statistical majority we assume that the father of this child didn't make her ineligible to marry a kohen she can marry into the priesthood and the gemara relates actually that this happened in um in Sipori, which is a famous town in the Galilee, you can still go to Sipori and see the ruins there. It's a rabbinic, and it's mentioned, it, it's mentioned the Talmud in the Mishnah at Sipori. And the Talmud relates this happened in Sipori at a time when wagons were passing, but most of the wagon passing people were kasherim, were so to speak, kosher people. So, in other words, not only the majority of the town, but the majority of the passers-by were kosher. And the Rambam in his Mishneh Torah makes the following comment about the halachot that we've just learned. You know, we've just learned that generally we believe the woman, she can marry into the priesthood. But then he, he, he let's say, he narrows. What are we talking about? What are we talking about here? We're really talking. We're talking about a place where she was on a thoroughfare or she was in a carriage in the fields where people pass by, and most of the passers by were Ksherim. And most of verov ha'ir sheparshu elu of rim mimenu kshirim, and most of the the inhabitants of the city from which they departed work were kshirim. She hachamim asu ma'ale bichusin vehitzrichu shne rubot, because the sages elevated the standards required with regard to lineage and required two majorities. In other words, a majority of the passers by and a majority of the town. And so it seems as if Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer are, do believe the woman, but the Gemara or the Halakha comes back, you know, it comes back later and it shrinks. It shrinks the extent to which we believe the woman. And the Halakha essentially is, if she's already married to a Kohen, we don't make a divorce her. But Lechatrila, in the first instance, she shouldn't marry a Kohen. And that is the closure of the first chapter of Ketubot. And in the second chapter, we're going to learn more and more halachot about belief and testimony and when people are believed, actually both men and women, and what the various motivations and situations are.